Jay Horowitz, special edition of Amazing Conversations with Jack Fisher. Jack, I'm honored to have Mr. Jack on the phone. 60 years ago this April, Jack pitched the first game at Shea Stadium, April 17th, 1964. Jack, what do you, no decision, what do you remember about the game? I look back, Jay, on all the games that, uh, that I pitched in, and I probably remember as much about this game as any. I can remember when I first got dressed and walked out on the field and looked out over the right field wall and saw all the people coming from the trains and the subway coming in. It was a, a herd of people, and it was a beautiful day. And I just uh, I can remember going out uh, to try to warm up at the beginning of the game. And uh, there were so many reporters on the field, must have been 30 or 40 reporters on. And remember, we used to warm up right in front of the dugout. Right in front of the dugout, exactly, yes. And uh, and I was afraid I was going to hit somebody. Somebody's going to walk between me and the catcher. So I went over to Casey and I said, Casey, do you mind if I go out and warm up out in the bullpen? He said, I don't see why not. Go ahead. And that was so the that first was time, right, Jack? Training. Now everybody does it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a trendsetter. So... <laughs> So you go six and two thirds innings, Pirates get a run in the ninth inning to win, you know, four to three. Pretty good lineup today. Clemente, Stargell, Bill Mazarowski for the Pirates. Yeah, I, I everybody talks about I gave up the first home run there, Stargell. Nobody mentions that the first strikeout was Roberto Clemente. I like That's that. pretty good first strikeout. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah oh, Ed Bauda, I think Ed Bauda lost the game. Uh, of 50,000 people in the stands. And the World's Fair had just opened too, right, Jack? So it must have been a pretty exciting time around Shea Stadium then. It was. It was. Did you guys get a chance to go to the World's Fair much? Were you playing? How did that work out? They they made a special occasion for us to go over anybody that wanted to come. And I brought my family along. And we went over. And it was great because they ushered us right up at the front of all the lines. And we got through. And, uh, yeah, we saw quite a bit of the World's Fair. Just that one day. Just in one day. I mean, do you go back a lot or not really? Not really. And I, I don't think I ever went back. Oh. Jack, tell me about Casey Stengel. You hear all the stuff about him, this buffoon, this guy. But the more and more people I speak to, that was kind of a charade to protect his players. That he was a pretty was. intelligent guy. He was. When he, when he got you one-on-one, there was no doubt that, you know, you understood what he was talking about. What yeah, he, Casey, Casey was great for me. He really was. I mean, what else could you ask for to get the ball every four days? And he gave me the ball every four days. Not, not to pick up a bad record. Let me preface it. So I spoke to Roger Craig a couple of times before he passed, and I think you tied him in 65 or 24 losses. But Roger always said to me, the manager had a lot of faith to keep running you out there all those times, despite the loss. Is that how you looked at it, too? Well, I, even though I had all those losses, I thought that I kept us in most of the games. If we could have just gotten a few more uh, a run or two, we, we would have been a lot better off in those games. I think my run average is in the threes. It, it, so. it, it's, yeah, two, so you're, in, that, in that year, you go 8-24, you're, you pitched 253 two thirds innings, 252 hits, and the ERA was below four. That's amazing. That that's amazing yeah. stats. Uh, you just try to you know give your 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 team a, a chance to win a ball game, that, and that's that's the starting starting pitcher's job. Even through your career, Jack. I mean, you you would you you pitch for a lot of bad Met teams in the four years you were there. I think the team played. Winning percentage is thirty six percent. Your rear ring was right around four, and you know we had to be proud of what you did with a lot, a lot of great teams, huh? Well, it just seemed to, when I came up with Baltimore, it just seemed like, <laughs> and we had a decent team at Baltimore, but I had a little. Uh, I was one of those guys that when you pitched, you know, you better shut out the other team or only give up one run. Or you're going to get the loss, and I, I had a lot of one nothing, two one losses uh, yeah. in my life. I can remember actually 
thinking back with the Mets, I remember uh, going on a road trip one time, went into uh, San Francisco, and I drew Juan Marichal. And I lost wow. the game in the bottom of the ninth inning, one nothing. Uh, we go to Los Angeles. I draw Koufax. We go into the bottom of the ninth. I lose one nothing. And we went into Houston, and a guy by the name of Don Notterbart started for him. It was uh, just a spot starter. <laughs> and I lost that game one nothing in the bottom of the ninth inning. Wow. So I, I lost mean, three straight you, games one nothing. Your your stats don't you really don't belie how well you pitched. You mentioned Koufax. It was a game in '65. If I hope my information is correct, you got a save for Tugger McGraw, and it was the first Mets win over Koufax. Right. I remember. I remember that well because uh, actually, when I uh, would talk to Tug after we were out of baseball and we would meet someplace, and that's the first thing he would always come up to me and say, "That was the biggest game of my life." He said, "You saved the biggest game of my life." Tell me, what was it like, you know, after the first year or two with Chase Stadium? You pitched at the Polo Grounds with the Giants, right? I mean, how was it pitching in Shea the whole first year, even though the team wasn't great? It was a lot of, you know, uh, support from the fans. Oh, it was. I mean, we were <laughs> – we had the greatest fans in the world. I mean, they – if we won a game, it was it was a big thing, and they really let you know that they appreciated it. And even when you come off the field, you know, after the seventh or eighth inning, and and you always got a standing ovation. And they they were the greatest fans in the world, and I thought it was a very the, as far as the stadium was concerned, I thought it was a very fair ballpark. I mean, there was no bloop home runs hit there. You had to hit the ball good, but. Uh, but I thought the fences were at the right spots. Well, what we were going to say, when you pit for the Giants, you, you, you played with Willie Mays, right? What, what, what do you remember about playing with Willie? Willie, he was, first of all, he, he was so talented. There wasn't anything that he that he couldn't do on a baseball field. And he also loved the game. So I mean, you put those those combinations together, and you you've got a great ball player. Which of course he was a very great ball player. It was a pleasure to 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 see him every day play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you get traded after the '67 season to the White Sox. You know, we kid around, even though you weren't there in '69, you were a big part of the Mets miracle Mets because you were traded for Al Weiss and the great Tommy Agee. Yes, I, I know very well. Yeah, I understand that the trade was that uh, the the Mets offered either me or Don Cardwell, and they chose me instead of Cardi. So, Do you ever look back and say, you know, like you what you were, I you know, like you the teams weren't great, and then two years after you left, they win the world championship. Do you ever look back and say what could have, should have, what happened? Oh maybe? God, I, all the time. Well, actually, when I was traded over to uh, the White Sox, they had won, gone to the championship the year before. And I thought, hey, I've got a, a real good chance here. And, and I got over. We ended up starting out under Eddie Stanky, and we lost the first 10 games of the year. <laughs> it was it was kind of a miserable season there. You know, quirking our schedule this year, uh, Jack, we, we play the Pirates on April 17th. So it'll be 60 years to the day. It will help to do something to commemorate that day. But, but I mean, that's something you have in your memory back, right? The pretty awesome thing to pitch the first game in, in Shea Stadium. I, I definitely, uh, like I say, I remember the, that game as, as much as I did any game I ever pitched. Maybe even my first win in the big leagues was uh, – I remember much more about the Shea Stadium game than I did that game. That game. Do people remember? You know, do you get Emmy getting the letters, or people didn't realize that uh, you did? I, I still get fan mail. Oh yes. Okay, are you sixty years later. You still, you, you, you still get fan years mail. Later. Yeah. yeah, I was a spry twenty-four year old then. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but but you know, in addition to your baseball background, you were a great football player, Jack. One of my heroes, I looked up. You beat in a high school game the great Fran Tarkington. 
or who used to be a Viking banana giant quarter. We beat him seven nothing in the championship game, right? Right, yeah, we uh, it, it wasn't a championship game; it was a regular season game. Uh, we went on and won the state championship, and but I I did play against I quarterbacked against him, uh, and and we ended up winning I think seven uh, seven nothing uh, you say yeah and, and also I also pitched against him in in American Legion baseball. He was a shortstop. Yeah, he was a hell of a quarterback. I'm a big football giant fan, and he came to the Giants reeling around. We was with the Vikings and stuff like that. Yeah, he, very nice guy, too. Yeah. Jack, Jack, what do you remember about your Met teammates? Do you stay in touch with them and all? Any of the guys you played with back then? Or yeah. Well, probably the guy that I stayed in touch with the most was Tracy Stallard till, till he passed away. And I still, uh, Ed Crane Pool and I get a call once in a while from Ron Swoboda. Yeah. Uh, that's, so that's you and Tracy it. Stallion have a lot in common, right? Yeah, yeah Maris home runs. But yeah, you were 60 and he was 61, right? Right, right. Uh, well, you know what? If you can go into the history, but why not give up a, a historic home run like that, right? I mean, some, uh, the, like the old story goes, somebody's got to do it. I just happened to be there. Hey. Looking back, Chuck, your time in New York was great. I mean, you know, even though there was a lot of winning, the fans and the whole stuff was good for you. I I probably enjoyed myself there as much as I play in any any place, even with losing those games. Mainly because I was given the ball to pitch. I was given the ball every every four days, and I did most of my. With the other clubs, I didn't get the ball every four days, so I appreciated the the one uh, the the stint that I had with the Mets. Did you overlap with with Roger Craig at all? I forget. I mean, no, he, no, Roger was never uh, on the team when I. Yeah, I, I mean, he always told me, you know, he said, "I'm proud of getting all, you know, start plus all your complete games." I think you had, you know, you you average ten, twelve complete games a year. That doesn't happen anymore, right? I think I've got what sixty-five or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I did, we're not going to be sixty-five complete games for a career for uh, a long time, probably. Do you Unless follow they the game? Do you, do you follow the game much, Jack? This these days? I, or? Well, I, I'm a uh, absolutely. I, I get the baseball channel, and I, I get all the games. I probably, I probably miss maybe two Met games all year. Right, you still have the affiliation, huh? You still, uh, 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 yep, yep, they're my team. What, what, what's the man? What's the man always doing? Hey, another guy, I know you, you live, you're in Eastern Pennsylvania right now, right? I mean, right, Harry Holmes was from your hometown, Harry Holmes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he used to run him, him and all before, before. Well, that. when I had my sports bar, uh, he would come in there and, and yeah, I knew Larry, yeah, I he know. Was a, hey, he was a, he was a hell of a champion, but you he know was. we're in a good spot now, Jack. With our new ownership, we we there's a feeling about the past to honor the past. We would like to do every year, pick out a couple of moments like this moment would be great. I mean, to have I hope we get you down here on April seventeenth. You know, sixty years to the day. You know, you pitched here. Another guy I wanted to speak to too is you know the great Ron Hunt, who was our first all-star that year. Right. What, what do you remember about Ron getting hit by pitches? <laughs> well, I tell you, he, he was, he would get up on top of that plate and he just wouldn't budge. And then a, a pitch came inside. He just lifted his arm up and it, it hit him in the ribs, but he, uh, he, he got on base for us. Jack, what do you think about the new rules now? The uh, runner on second base and the, uh, you know, pitches don't hit. I mean, do you well, like that? Don't like, obviously, don't like I, obviously, I like to swing the bat. I didn't swing it very well. I think my lifetime average is some like 125 or something like that. But I, I enjoyed the challenge going up there. I uh, I could bunt, and we did a lot of bunting back there, which they don't do today. Uh, no, 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 not at all. What no. was, uh, Jack, what, aside from the first game, you any – other favorite Met games you want to recount for me? Do you, I mean, I know, you know, a long time ago. Any one or two that you remember? Well, I can remember after Casey was gone and 
West, West, West Westrum. West Westrum was the manager, yeah. And of course, he was a, a when I was with the uh, Giants. West was the coach out at the Giants, and and he came to work for the Mets as a first or third base coach, first base coach. And I think he's the one who recommended that the Mets got get me over there. And uh, so we we were very close. And I remember pitching a game in Philadelphia. And uh, we got – it was a tie score in the bottom of the eighth inning. And uh, I think it was 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. And – they they got the bases loaded and nobody out against me, and here comes Wes out to take me out of the game, and I met him at the foul line. So he, before he could make a motion, and I said, "You know, Wes, our our bullpen's not the greatest right now." <laughs> I said, "You know, if you take me out of this game, we're we're going to lose it. I've got a guy coming up that uh, I have pretty good luck with." Uh, that's the, their next hitter. I said, I think I think I might even be able to strike him out. And then the next guy, I'll get him to hit a ground ball. I said, I, I think that's the best way for us to go. And he kind of shook his head. He said, okay. And he turned around and walked out and left me on the mound. And I did strike out Darren Johnson uh, for the first out. And uh, Cookie Rojas hit a ground ball, one hopper right back to me. Home to first, and we got out of the double play. Did you and win the, a game? In the top of the ninth, we scored a run. And I thought, man, I got a chance. In the bottom of the ninth, we brought in that bullpen that was going to come in for me. Lost the game, too. They scored wow. two off of them. Wow. So I just <laughs> saved myself a loss. <laughs> yeah. Jack, yeah, tell me, you mentioned briefly, tell me about Tug McGrew. I knew, got to know him a little bit. Was, was he as flaky as people say he was? I mean, uh, you know, was he a little different kind of guy in a nice way? In a very nice way. It, 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 he was he was fun to be around. Always had a a, a laugh on his a smile on his face. Laughed a lot, and uh, uh, a pretty good screwball he had. Yeah, he did. He was a good good guy. You know, uh, yeah, listen, Jack, good guy. Good being around him. It's been a pleasure, an honor speaking to you and. I hope to get you back to city in in um in April so we could talk again about sixty years ago your start opening up Chase Stadium and it's an honor to speak to you and you know take care and we'll speak soon. Okay, babe. Thanks, Thanks for calling.